Gotcha. We call the meeting to order. Let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first item of business is the approval of the minutes for the regular meeting, September the 15th. And I will abstain for voting due to not attending. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Our next item is confirmation and approval of the claims. On the uh, uh, confirmation of claims uh, this month, uh, we have uh, paid a total of uh, $445,436.39. Uh, out of that amount, our, in our fund one total, we had 259332.25. Uh, we compare this to our uh, amount paid this time last year. Uh, we have uh, 294,390.04, uh, and so there is a difference of, of, of less of $35,057.79 paid uh, this period. Uh, a few things that I will uh, uh, make you aware of in the claims of this time, we did make uh, some payments in, in the neighborhood of around $5,600 uh, for the playground uh, that we've been doing some work on at the elementary school. Um, we also, uh, as I've made you aware of some upgrades in our auditorium that we've been working on, we were able to uh, uh, make a payment on some um, uh, auditorium uh, drapes that are being installed. Also, we've done some much needed work on that floor uh, on the stage area. Uh, so. Uh, about $7,000 roughly uh, for those two items. Um, we have um, uh, a unit that, that's uh, gone out in the middle school that we've had to replace, uh, $7,300. And uh, as you know, we have capital outlay, outlay money for that. We do roll that capital outlay into general fund, uh, but this is the purpose of that capital outlay money is to cover these unforeseen uh, roofs and things of HVAC uh, nature. Um, We've also made a payment uh, to our uh, auditor, our, our first installment of $7,200. I think that's a little over 10,000, maybe 11, is it 12,000, Tracy? Mm -hmm. Around 12,000 is the final, but we're uh, working on that audit. Tell you a little more about that later. Um, and then uh, you also see a $2,000 check there that was issued uh, to um, Holiday Inn of Bardstown, and that simply uh, was picked up on uh, uh, and coded wrong. Uh, it should have been the Bowling Green uh, Holiday Inn, and, and uh, the, the the right uh, vendor received the money. It just just was uh, uh, posted to wrong. So we'll, we'll make that correction. On that, that's on page 11 of your minutes report, not necessarily page 11 of the document, but uh, from the report. If you want to look at that, our fund 400, our debt service uh, is 28,607 uh, and 50 cents, and uh, we made payments. Uh, for for interest on two of those bond series. So I'll be glad to take any questions that you might have concerning, concerning the claims. I feel that everything is in excellent order. we we'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Motion to approve claims. We have a motion to approve claims. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a second. <clears throat> Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Next we'll have our financial report. Our financial report this month, um, as you well know, our tax season is in full swing. Uh, we have issued, issued the tax bills. Everything is going extremely smooth uh, in that area. Um, uh, what's been forwarded to us from the PBA uh, in total uh, we have billed uh, $6,938,897. Uh, to date, we have had uh, 
exonerations, and I, I think you remember from our discussion earlier what an exoneration is, but we have, uh, it has been requested almost $7,000 uh, be exonerated, and so we will honor that based on uh, the, the KRS. And just a reminder, out of this amount that uh, uh, we do not collect that entire amount due to uh, folks taking the discount, uh, which certainly is a good thing, and then uh, there's those exonerations that we talk about, and we have a small percentage uh, that, that simply are unable to pay or do not pay. Uh, we do collect uh, right at our past uh, history has been right at 98% of that amount, so keep that in mind. Also in our financial report, uh, Mr. Uh, Jason Strange with Smith and, Smith and Company uh, is uh, continuing to um, complete the uh, audit. Most of all the field, actually all the field work uh, has been completed. Uh, in both the schools and uh, here at the district. So he is finalizing uh, some, some matters there. I think uh, his initial response has been quite favorable for, for both the districts and the schools. So we look forward to getting that report at our November meeting. Uh, that will uh, be an important time to, to uh, uh, make sure that we are uh, on the right track and doing things uh, the way we're supposed to be. And I, <coughs> can assure you that, that, that that's probably going to be a favorable news there. Uh, then one other item I'll, I'll try to explain. This is a rather difficult one to explain, but um, I think in the end I can, I can get you there. Um, uh, Governmental Accounting Standards Board. Uh, we refer to that as GASP. Uh, we have a GASP 68. 68 is that standard uh, that we hear sometimes uh, accountants, CPAs uh, talk about that. Uh, for us, what it means, it, it impacts our accounting and financial reporting for pensions. And so that comes back to the K, uh, uh, Kentucky Retirement, uh, T, uh, Kentucky Teacher Retirement, KTRS uh, system. And um, um, what has happened in the past um, is that we have reported uh, the liability for the district. And what this GASP 68 is saying is that we have to report uh, not only our liability, but also the KTRS liability. It amounts to about $318,000. It has little effect on what it changes uh, in our accounting procedures, but you're gonna see on the uh, annual financial report and on the balance sheet, an increase of $318,000. And that number is still being worked on. That number may grow a little bit, may reduce a little bit, but Jason's gonna, gonna nail that down for us. And it's just one of those things uh, which is good news on why we have uh, an audit completed. Uh, it keeps us in, in uh, good order, and uh, Jason has identified that, and that'll be something that uh, he'll make a change on. So hopefully I didn't confuse you totally on that, but uh, when you do see an increase in liability, uh, right now it's about 1.5 million. It'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.8 million. And again, it's, a, it's an accounting procedure. It doesn't change uh, anything uh, that, um, that's going to affect us in any way except for accounting records. So. And then of course you have your uh, balance uh, sheet there on your treasury report. You feel free to take a look at that. You will notice that it is in check and in balance. Any questions or concerns uh, with the treasury report this month? If not, that completes our report. Okay, next is our superintendent's report. Really uh, excited to bring uh, your, your uh, the superintendent's report to you today. Um, uh, very excited in the sense that uh, the research uh, has proven time after time that students who are involved in their school uh, are more successful than students who are not involved in their school in some sort of extracurricular activity. Uh, we've been very proud here at our high school and middle school we've had uh, for long 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 period of time we've had uh, great extracurricular activities uh, this has been something that we've been focusing on we've moved it uh, further and further down uh, not too long ago we had the elementary uh, come and present to you uh, the clubs that they have uh, in their in their school uh, now we have the Barstown primary school and this is our our kindergarten our first and second graders uh, and we have with us uh, today Miss um, Marcy Ballard and Miss uh, Michelle Ryan, uh, principal, and we're very fortunate to have them and very pleased to have them. And we're looking forward to uh, hearing what you all have to say and share with us. You're going to see on their website there, uh, uh, I think I counted uh, 17 clubs that they have at this point. So, Miss Ryan, Miss Ballard, welcome. And, uh, 
Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, along with what Mr. Hallspaw was saying, about four years ago, our Health and Wellness Committee, and I know this is strange to start with Health and Wellness Committee, but our Health and Wellness Committee was meeting, and we're talking about what are some of the needs of our kids that just aren't being met. And one of the things that we quickly discovered, or in our discussion led to, was we're missing that piece, a piece of the puzzle for the whole child, is incorporating more stuff for kids having something for everybody, a place for everybody to belong. And that quickly led to the idea and the formation of some clubs. Four years ago, we started doing clubs. We began with four clubs and about 75 students. We quickly have grown that under Marcy's uh, guidance and leadership. She is our club sponsor at the school. Um, last year, I'm going to let Marcy tell you the numbers, but uh, so Marcy took over last year as the club chair and I'm going to turn it over to her and let her tell you about the clubs that we have in place now and the impact on our school and on our students. Well, four years ago I was one of those original four teachers and we realized very quickly how excited the children were and how they went home and they talked about it and they talked with their peers and so we realized the advantages of after school activities that are totally free for all of our students. Um, some of those things is students can explore um, their own interest and something that's meaningful to them in a fun way. Our clubs encompass students from all grade levels, kindergarten, first, and second. So it kind of give, gives second graders an opportunity for leadership and there's something to be learned from all kindergarten, first, and second graders as well. Um, students spend more time in an academic setting with enriching activity, activities. The longer we can keep them at school, we feel is awesome. Um, and it provides culture to a child's life and opportunities for some non-traditional learning. For example, one of our clubs is called Global Explorers. And we bring in people from various countries and ethnicity, ethnicities. And they cook authentic food. They learn some of the language. Um, we also have a Christian-based club. We have a Special Olympics club. Um, that kind of incorporates students from the general education as well as special education together. Um, we have yoga, we have basketball, we have cooking. We feel like we have lots of opportunities for all different students, something that everyone can enjoy. Um, we're very excited this year. We've expanded from four to 16, and we already have 320 students signed up. Um, they start October the 29th, so we haven't started, but we're looking very forward to it. And that's almost 50% of our population that we're able to serve, so we're very excited about that. Um, and we post updates to our website. This is last year's um, because we haven't had our first club yet. But it kind of keeps students excited. They go on, they look at their pictures, they're excited about it. It keeps parents involved and also our community members. Um, we had a yoga instructor approach us and say, hey, I saw you had a yoga club. Can I stop in? We said, absolutely. So this is just kind of an outreach way for us to get community involvement. Um, and we feel our clubs are well-rounded with lots of opportunities for all our students and we're looking forward to starting. So we'll just real quick kind of go through some of the pictures and Mar we're not going to go through all, but Marcy can tell you a little bit or you can ask sure. if you have any questions about any of our clubs. So one of them is dance and movement. We also have a music club and they just love to create their own music. Just here they're making some ornaments. Global Explorers is um, one of the clubs that Marcy was talking about we have people come in, uh, community members, it's a great way to have community involvement to talk about uh, different uh, the countries that they're from. We love to eat and try that food and dance and just have a great time. Our club is another club that we have. Yoga club. <laughs> We love cheerleading. And Nicole, I've got to talk about Nicole. She was one of my cheerleaders when I was a cheerleading coach. So we spread the love there. Uh, Book Hooks is one of ours, is Marcy's club. And they um, do recipes and, and talk about food related to literature. Crafting is a hands on, kids are making. It's a make and take. Science club, they're getting to do some science experiments, some hands-on. Here they were talking about doing an experiment about Bernoulli's uh, principle, which is something when I taught seventh grade. I taught Bernoulli's principle in seventh grade, and I love that my first and second graders are getting that. Good News Club, this is our Christian-based club. We spawn, we um, work with Mill Creek Baptist Church 
to have this club in our, uh, the Good News Club is the one club that's a little bit different because they meet weekly instead of monthly. But they come in, we've got some volunteers, the ladies that come in from the church and several staff volunteers that help because it's our largest club, it's our largest group and um, doing some um, activities there. This year we're adding on these clubs so we don't have pictures. Mm -hmm. We're adding on Legos and reading blocks. The basketball club, uh, the nature club, young athletes, which is a version of Special Olympics. It's uh, Special Olympics at our age. Um, the Tiger Pride Club and the Leadership Club. So like Marcy said, we're really, really excited and to know that half of our student body is benefiting from this free resource. We're just, we're really excited. What time of day do the clubs meet? Roughly. They meet after school, oh, after school from 2.45 till 3.30. Wow. Very good. Any other questions? Do the parents pick them up? Yes, they do. Well, so we, yeah, we, we haven't had, we, you know, we've talked to some parents who maybe had some transportation concerns. We've been able to work through any transportation issues, so the transportation hasn't stopped any students from participating. The clubs were getting ready to start, so they go from October to to the end of the school year, once a month. Okay. That Lego club, I, just, I think it was last year they had the, one of the intersections after after this year. I went over and watched all these kids working with Legos, and they had motorized. It's really awesome. And it was like a competition. Yes. And unfortunately, the girls. One. Oh. <laughs> Girls. <laughs> they seem to work together better. But it, was, it, was a, it was a teamwork thing, and also them being able to visualize what they what they wanted to do with these Legos to get them to move and stuff. It's fascinating. And we love that. Most of our clubs we try to incorporate problem solving and that working together as a team and building those skills. We're working those life skills and those leadership skills in. In a fun way, you know, the kids think they're playing and they're having fun and they're really learning valuable lifelong skills. Thank you all very much. Appreciate sure. it. Thank you all. Our next item on the superintendent's report is um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Barstown Foundation for Excellence in Public Education. Uh, this uh, organization was, was found, uh, was created back in 1985. Um, and um, since that time, the, well, the purpose of the foundation was to provide um, things that uh, the public education was unable to provide to uh, give you uh, enrichment opportunities uh, and things of that nature. Um, th this uh, being 1985, this will be the 30th year. This is our anniversary, if you will. Um, since that time, uh, the Barstown City School uh, Foundation um, has been used as a model for many other schools in the state of Kentucky. We were the first. Uh, we've, we've had several visit us. Actually, I've, I've actually uh, attended other board meetings and actually uh, spoke on behalf of our foundation and um, uh, how people can start one. So uh, it's, it's one of those first, and Kim's going to tell you about a few other firsts due to the foundation. Uh, we thought this would be a very appropriate time uh, going into November the 14th being the big celebration, if you will, the 30th year of of the foundation in the 10th year of the strings, uh, we thought this would be a good time just to kind of do a little refresher on uh, uh, about our foundation, what we do, and, and how we do it. So our executive director of the, the foundation is here with us today, Ms. Kim Lacey. And Kim, uh, looking forward to your presentation. Thanks. Thank you for the opportunity to bring you up today. Um, we did think it was a great time to do this since it is in an anniversary year for the foundation. We were started in 1985, um, so this is our 30th year. We are a separate 501c3 organization. We were the first private foundation in the state to support a public school district. And the first project of the foundation was the Early Childhood Education Center for four-year-olds which was also the first program of its kind in the state. 
Throughout our history, our mission has remained the same, and that's to fund programs which are not adequately funded through traditional funding sources. This is an excerpt from a document aiming for instructional greatness by Dr. Smotherman that was proposing the formation of the foundation. I have to tell you, I have a fantastic board of directors. You will recognize these folks. They're local businessmen and women who are committed to the foundation, but also committed to making Barstown City Schools the best it can be. They help raise money and make decisions about the programs that are funded. Our funding comes from businesses and individuals, organizations in our community. Our community has been so supportive throughout our 30 year history. It also comes from our own employees through the Second Century Club. I am particularly proud that many of our employees donate to the foundation either through payroll deduction or one-time donations. I just think that says a lot about the value of the foundation to the school district. People give in memory and honor of individuals as well. And thanks to our finance department, we um, benefit from the rewards from the district's use of the American Express card which also has been kind of a model for other school districts in the state. At the beginning of each school year, the foundation considers many grants, which are $700 or less. And then we also consider major grants, which are in excess of $700. We fully consider each of the grants. We have some very, uh, interesting and animated conversations oftentimes um, you know when it comes down to it it's basically what's best for our students and what is it that our teachers want to do that's above and beyond for their students we do ask that they come back and report to the um, foundation about the use of the funds these are just some of the criteria that we look for. We do not purchase consumable goods. We certainly try to make purchases that can be used with students over and over in future years. One, one thing you'll see there is have I secured the additional funds necessary. Quite often we do partner with the school, with the PTO, with an, another grant, for instance, um, to provide funds. And the, the foundation board really likes to see that commitment on the part of the school that they are either making a financial commitment or they have sought other funds above the $700 to make it possible. I mentioned that um, our employees donate and each at the beginning of each school year I put together a short video to show the staff so that it gives them sort of an overview of what happened the year before so I just want to show you that this year's video
directed to our employees. In the video, we are in our third year of uh, funding the STEM initiative for the school district in grades 4 through 12. Our total financial commitment to that program is about $30,000 over those three years. And you saw some of the, um, the STEM camp, and I know Mr. Fry was here this summer when they were in the midst of their Engineer This program. These are some pictures from some of the previous camps. You can tell it's a very hands-on, very teamwork-oriented environment for the students. These are some additional investments that the foundation is making this school year. The World Language Grant will touch students from um, the primary school all the way through high school. And then you can see some of the many grants that are being funded this year in all the schools and also in various grade levels and subject areas. Something we started several years ago is our own version of the prize patrol. So uh, several of the foundation board members get together and we go and surprise the teachers with the news that their grant is being funded. These are just a few of the reactions we get when we walk into the room. Um, one of the board members last year said to me how heartwarming it was to see the gratitude. She said it, it was like we were putting money in their paychecks but what we were doing was giving them that bit of extra money to do something special that they want to do with their students. Marcy, you didn't know I was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a priceless reaction so we appreciated it. This year we have formed a committee called What's New That We Should Do and those are the representatives for the committee. They will begin meeting soon and will meet throughout the rest of this school year to determine a large project for the foundation similar to the things that we've done in the past with strings, with STEM, with early childhood education. So we are looking at what that next thing is going to be for the foundation to fund. Strings has been mentioned several times here and you know it's such a great example of what an investment today can mean in this school district for the future. It was started in 1985 and Ms. Shrewsbury I'm sure you can't believe that it's been that long. Um, now Barstown City Schools has a full-time strings instructor working with more with more than 120 students in grades K through 12 or 3 through 12 I'm sorry tiny taste Mr. Hosclaw mentioned we are going to celebrate the uh, 
30th anniversary of the foundation and the 10th anniversary of the Strings program on November the 14th at 2 p.m. in the high school auditorium. Um, we can also show off some of the upgrades to the auditorium, which is exciting. Um, there will be a Strings concert by the middle and high school orchestras along with a um, special guest violinist who will play with the high school. We also will have some of our returning uh, string students who have graduated who will come back and play with uh, the high school orchestra. We'll have a celebratory dessert reception to follow that. So we hope, we certainly hope that you will be here for that. It should be a great occasion. Do you all have any questions about the work of the foundation or Jim, what is your average budget you know the two years with the foundation well we take in typically our fall campaign is our major fundraiser and it takes in 12 to 15 thousand a year we do have some investments at this point which allows us to look for that major project so we have um been, and we do have an investment committee, um, several of the board members who are very knowledgeable um, about that help um, with that. Um, the teachers, do you have a number on, on how much donations the teachers, the employees contribute? I'm, I'm not asking questions off the cuff, but... Right, how, how, how much, much through the Second Century mm -hmm. Club? Um, it's just, it's about $1,000 a month. Oh, well. Yeah. And it has grown substantially in the past few years. Um, you know, we, we just try to, to keep the name of the foundation and the work of the foundation um, out in front of folks. So. What is the strings? Is, that, is there a cap on how many? Uh, can be allowed to join that or it looks like it maybe has expanded over time it looks great well it has expanded um yes i mean i'm sure that uh, miss land has uh, limits but i don't think we turn folks away right. um you know one of the things that we're looking to do is purchase a base uh, for the program because a base is a very difficult thing for students to carry around. <laughs> so if, if a student rides the bus, they can't, you know, do that. So um, we would like to have a base that stays here at school that um, that they can practice and use here at school. So that's one of the things. The, the proceeds from this event are going back to the foundation to fund arts programs in all our schools. Y'all track the number of kids that are affected each year by the number by the grants. Well, we certainly could from from the reports that come in um, at the end of the year. I have not done that, but certainly could look at the number of students every year. Each each uh, grant usually affects a good number of students. One of the criteria is it can't be for a very small focus group. Typically, it's usually for a larger group. For instance, the grant last year, the uh, Visual Thinking Strategy Grant at the elementary school was for every student. Every student in the elementary school was able to be a part of that program. I've been in present figure for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would be. We continue to impact as well as reusable goods. Right. Mm -hmm. That'd be yes. difficult to track. Mm -hmm. Yes. Chore yes. for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we definitely look for programs that be that can be continued year after year. Well, I think our foundation is one of our areas of pride. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great thing. And it doesn't just happen; it happens with great leadership. Miss uh, mm -hmm. Lacey, we thank you for your great work. We really appreciate it. Great presentation. And as too. I said, I have a fantastic board of directors. And that's that's all I have, Madam mm -hmm. Chair. Okay, that concludes our superintendent's report.
Our next item is a discussion of the 2014-15 assessment results and the 2015-16 delivery targets. I'm going to ask Ms. Blackman to come forward and uh, share with you uh, the information that we have to share with you. I, I mentioned to you that um, uh, we feel like this is extremely good news. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, She'll end up telling the finer details, but uh, we're very excited about the progress that we made the district uh, and also within our schools uh, uh, it's it's clear that um, um, we have made great improvement and we want to stress that to you today and uh, Ms. Blackman is going to going to share this information with you well I had half of that the delivery targets are actually being recalculated um, I've just got back this morning from the DAC meeting yesterday and today and they're not quite ready. They're going to revamp everything for the delivery targets for next year. Oh, yeah, sure. um, so I, I, I can give you our update. That's but okay. we'll, we'll yeah, next month assessment. I'll yeah. give you the delivery targets because they're recalculating and things are changing. But um, no, I'm very, very happy with our assessment results. Um, I, I know that we are on a, a right trajectory, as they say. You know, it, <laughs> to make improvements. It's long term, and it's it's in increments that, and we're going to see, especially um, uh, in our uh, in elementary, which will just only make it uh, the 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 uh, improvement uh, go up the, the ladder, as they say. But here is the review, just of of the uh, accountability as it is. I'm just going to say this too. Um, the winds of change are blowing right now in assessment and accountability. You know, we have a new commissioner and some things are being revamped even as we speak. So this may look different, but this is the report I'm gonna give you today. This is, this is the accountability. It's kind of like a piece of pie. And um, at the elementary, 30% of it is for achievement, uh, gap, looking at your um, gap groups, and growth and then that's distributed a little bit differently at the middle and high school so this is how the the, the, the pie of accountability is split up um, this is what you're going to hear today is the last time you're going to hear about explore and uh, the growth from plan because uh, explore and plan were not given this year so next year when i report on uh, accountability we're not going to see those results uh, again, college and career readiness. Um, last time you're going to see anything about Explore. Um, again, these are all the different ways for college and career readiness. Uh, you know, who gets assessed to death is the high school because if students don't make their benchmarks in ACT, then they can take the Compass, the Coyote uh, for college readiness, and then if they want to the career readiness, they take another assessment a couple of assessments for ASVAB or actually work keys that I don't even have up there. So that is the school that get, that gets, as we say, assessed to death. Uh, so that's, you have college and career readiness, you have K-PREP, and K-PREP, uh, again, that acronym, Kentucky Performance Rating for Educational Progress, uh, three through 11. This year, I, you know, I should have taken this out because science was not assessed which was unfortunate for us, because if you looked at last year's science accountability scores, they were way, way up there, way above state at the elementary, above the state in, in uh, the middle school. Had they not taken those out, I guarantee you we definitely would have seen a, a difference. Why were they not assessed? Is it a random thing? No, no, they're redoing the next generation science standards. Oh, I see. And they're not they haven't written an account uh, an assessment for that yet so that's the reason they took it out of the elementary high school however still does have science because they do end of course exams for biology at the end of the 10th grade so they do assess science but in 3 through 11 they do not and again the test the k prep test has multiple choice which is a norm reference so those those multiple choice uh, questions are then compared to uh, national nationally and we get reports on that short answer and extended response so that's what makes up the k-prep we also have next uh, the uh, program reviews and um, 
that is looking at your writing, your arts and humanities, your practical living, and your K-3. As we know, world language is going to be coming on the picture. Uh, high school had a baseline last year, so that will be part of accountability this year, world language. Uh, but they come up with the AMO, which is your annual measurable objective, by looking at 77% of your accountability and 23% of what you self-score on the program reviews. Now, program reviews, we do self-assess, we self-score ourselves, but we have to have the evidence to back up our scores. This year, for the first time, the state uh, picked out eight districts um, and did an audit. Fortunately, I'm not, not that I'm afraid of an audit, but I was glad we didn't have to go through that. Um, but um, well, I'm sure that our time will come that, that we will be randomly selected uh, for that. So uh, just to give you all a heads up, program reviews are gonna be taken out of AMOs next year, 15, 16. We will still be reporting those, but we, I don't know, uh, I have not been told how those will be expressed in accountability, but it will not be part of our AMOs next year. So, um, you may have to get your magnifying glasses to it on your handout. We'll, we'll, we'll send this to you uh, electronically, electronically to you. too, right? But um, this they readjusted um, because they took science out, so they had to readjust these 13, 14 scores. So uh, if you look at last year's, you think, huh, these scores don't quite jive because they had to recalculate uh, taking science out of that. So. These are the recalculated, and that's showing um, the scores from 13, 14, and then 14, 15. But they don't job with what you had last year with four, um, for the 13, 14, in case you looked at that. But here's the summary of accountability with that AMO. Remember, 77% is that uh, K prep or EOCs, and then uh, that 77% and then 23% um, um, program reviews and up three points uh, for the elementary which is fantastic you're only required uh, to show progress by increasing by one and we went up three which is fantastic uh, BMS down slightly but less than a point overall high school up 1.2 points in the district up 1.1 and again, this is how it, it kind of, it all shows you the next generation learners. And here's a summary I did for you. At the elementary, we saw increase. We're really seeing a great trajectory there. Um, we are, we have a label of high progressing, meaning that we are in the top 10% of progressing elementary schools in the state. Which That's really is, good news, folks. I mean, top 10% of elementary. And that's because we are, uh, they're, they're working very hard with this, our new math and reading program uh, that you all are aware of. Um, see increases in reading, social studies, writing. We saw just a small, small decrease in fifth grade math, uh, but we are above the state average in writing. And if you look at this, we're above the state average in writing in all three of our schools. So that is um, uh, just great news. On that, um, we are uh, again seeing increases in, in the middle school math and increases in social studies, writing, language, mechanics above the state average in writing at the high school. And again, program reviews, um, those are the numbers, but here's the summary. The elementary went 7.9 points up um, in, uh, in, and that's looking at practical living, arts and humanities, writing, K-3. The primary school does it as well. They average the two schools. So the primary K-2 and 3-5 scores are then averaged for the district. But uh, we had already maxed out on points. They had a maximum points at the middle and high school. So they were already at the maximum points. So they couldn't go up any higher. So here's a summary of applauses. We saw increases in proficiency and distinguished in all areas except fifth grade math. And that was just a less than a point decrease. We moved, this is the most exciting part, from 48 to 
a percentile in one year. And we're only 0 0.3 points from being a proficient elementary. And I, I don't know if you can recall the last couple of years, that is tremendous, tremendous progress. Uh, middle school, we saw some improvements in math. In high school, we are a proficient high school. And that is quite an accomplishment. And if you look at what we're up from 69 to 71 uh, for college and career, and then graduation, that is quite a jump in one year. And it's just a lot to be proud of. A lot of hard work. Tell us where we are. Oh, you're going to do the phone? Uh huh. Yes, that's it. So this is, you know, we, it's all about continuous improvement. If you look something common, PLCs, professional learning communities. That's where teachers work together as a team. They, they meet on a regular basis. Um, some of our schools are meeting weekly. Uh, other schools are meeting every other week. They're looking at uh, common assessments that they pull together. They, are, they have a um, scope and sequence um, where they take the curriculum working as a team and they have pacing guides so that they are teaching about the same uh, material during a specific time and at the end of that time they're doing common assessments where they're really working to see if kids are mastering the concepts and then working with students that are not mastering the concepts those that are mastering they're doing enrichment so they're constantly looking at the progress of their students together as a team and um, I'm very really excited um, about this development. We sent a team of all of us this summer to a three-day institute in, in Louisville and really got the shot in the arm that we needed for that. There's so much that is required now of teachers, as you all know, and you're very much aware of our um, high-stakes accountability and, and continuous improvement that working as a team is absolutely necessary. For one teacher to think that they can do it by themselves, you know, to work in isolation is just not, it's just impossible. So um, you see that that is something that we will continue to develop district-wide is the professional learning communities. Also, uh, this coming year, we are into novice reduction. They want to get, especially the GAP students, out of that novice category. And so we know that one of the best things to do for that is to beef up our interventions where when, when teachers are doing these common assessments and they see these students are not getting it, then, um, then we do some extra teaching and working with them in small groups. And so we're beefing that up district-wide. So we're improving PLCs, we're beefing up our interventions. Um, elementary still has some room, room for improvement in program reviews, um, so they're going to be improving on those. Um, and then we're really going to be focusing on uh, the middle school had a focus, um, needs improvement, and we're also a focus school with our special needs population uh, in reading and at the high school in writing. So um, we're really taking a, a hard look at the interventions for reading and writing at the middle and high school respectively. So you know, we've already started. We actually started in August with, with all of these initiatives for improvement. We will be writing our CDIP, uh, Comprehensive District Improvement Plan, along with our CSIPs. Uh, I've, I've been to a training yesterday and today I've got some really good ideas how to streamline that process. And just to let you know, that we were only 0 0.1 points from being proficient. You smell it? <laughs> I smell proficiency. <laughs> I smell proficiency. <laughs> I do. And um, I know that if we continue the way at the rate that we're improving, that there's just no way that we will not be a proficient district next year. So, um, do you all have any questions? It's good work. Appreciate it. I have a comment. I was uh, telling Mr. Holstall that when they had Education Reform Act came into the 1999 when I came on the board, we thought we'd never be proficient in life, ever. I mean, the goal was 2014. Oh, I know that. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just to think that we are one tenth of a point. One tenth, tenth of a point. point. One tenth of a point. And, and you know, it's changed. The, the uh, standards have even gone up oh. since then. You know. Oh, yeah. You know, truly, when I was talking about the professional learning communities, when, and, and I started teaching pre Kara, you know, um, they had at the, our uh, DAC meeting yesterday and today, they had people stand up, you know, were you here? Mm -hmm. Getting fewer of us <laughs> that are still in the game, you know, pre Kara. But, you know, I remember it, it was not anything uh, like it is now. Um, the high stakes accountability and making sure that all students. <coughs> all students are learning and all students are college and career ready and all students graduate you know it's it's a, it's a lot with as we know with the diversity and and some of the things that we deal with um but i'm i don't think i can ever uh compare the teamwork that i see going on uh, right now in all the schools with the teachers working together um, it's that is is very inspirational to me to see that going on appreciate you making that point i would agree with you on on that matter and i uh, we appreciate your leadership uh, in that area and uh, board members i can assure you that um, we're talking about the plc's with the professional learning uh, and things that are going on our, our folks are laser focused uh, we're, we're on it uh, we're moving forward and we're definitely improving thank you so much for working. Thank you. Thank you. i've heard comments about uh, you talk, You started out talking about the ladder process, building it from the early childhood on. I've heard people co make comments about uh, kids in the, in the primary school having to make decisions about their future at that young of an age. But I think unless kids have a little direction, they can just go to, into different fields, like different clubs, and find out what, where they're going. And by the time they get to high school, what they've accumulated from the early childhood, primary, middle, and, and, and elementary. That's that's how you gain, that's how you make your points. Mm -hmm. Start out early, mm -hmm. teach them, and, and then uh, let them see what they want. Well, you know, our early childhood is just all over the um, kindergarten, right? You know, our students <coughs> go through our three and four year old program, they do the brigands, the screener for you know school readiness, and we are, you know, they're held accountable. I mean, it goes down even to the three-year-old program where you have accountability <coughs> and four-year-old program. Um, and, you know, they're, it's uh, brain research that they, they look at, um, the whole child, the health and wellness. I mean, it's all part of, of uh, that whole child focus. And um, they really do care about each and every one of the students. And if we if we can get this well, everybody, what's the book name of the book that we got? To read? Leader Nation. What is it? Uh, Leader in Leader. Leader. My uh, five-year-old granddaughter is going to a school in South Carolina. She's already got the seven commitments memorized, and she brings home a booklet every month that's got, and each day's book is is, is marked out. They've got like they've got to have uh, recognition words, math colors. She can do the, the twelve months of the year, uh, seven days a week, and it's fall apart every day. There's something that, that that they're progressing on. If we can get this implemented, I think it'll be out of this world. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. And she's in just got kindergarten. This is kindergarten. Yeah. In yeah. South Carolina. We're ready. Our next item is approval of the 2016 school bus purchase authorization. I'll ask Mr. Hood to come forward and he will uh, be here for item six and seven. So, Mr. Hood. Um, as you know, uh, I've got to have on a schedule of uh, purchasing buses and um, I, I just recently went to a meeting and, and uh, just received some information on why that is. That the state the state recommends that you uh, purchase buses based on eight percent of what your fleet or at least your route fleet is. So for us, uh, we have 16, 17 regular routes, 
if you take 8% of that, you're going to get a number like 1.3. Uh, and we've been on a rotation of a 2 1, 2 1, 2 1, so we're right on schedule with that. Um, actually, we're in such good shape. We are, we are supposed to be getting two buses this year, but in looking over our whole fleet and everything that we have. Uh, in place and talking with the mechanic over there. Uh, we're only coming to you today for the purchase of one bus, um, which will then, if, if we choose to go that direction, we will get rid of one bus, which is a 1999 bus that will no longer be in operation when this bus is delivered. Um, just real quickly, I want to I want to remind you of something. There is there's cost of depreciation that we get every year from these buses. Yes, we pay for the buses up front. If we choose to do this, the next thing on the agenda is KISTA. We use KISTA to, to help fund this. Um, if we purchase this bus, the depreciation on that bus is a 10-year deal. Actually, it's a 14-year deal. At 10 years, you're per you have recouped 100% of what that bus cost you. If you still have a bus that's in good working order and you are maintaining that bus, they give you some incentive to keep on going up to year 14, which basically takes you uh, on the depreciation scale. Um, it actually, if I give you an example, that 99 bus, for example, back in uh, when that bus was purchased, the purchase cost of that bus was $59,425. We currently have in depreciation, we have gotten $73,687 from that bus. Uh, which is $14,000 more than the original cost. Now, I do not have the number of how much we may have put into that, that bus um, for repairs and things of that nature, but uh, the, the state reimburses us. Um, I wanted to be sure of that, so we found our number and I went to Tracy and we looked at the number because the transportation formula is crazy. It's just, it's a spreadsheet about this long. And I wanted to see is the number that it says we were going to get, which was I think thirty-six thousand or something this year in depreciation. Is it in our formula? Did we really get it? And we found yes, we really got it in the depreciation formula. So um, I can assure you, we checked on that. Um, the the bus purchase that I'm going to be asking for is we we always buy internationals because we've got tools for them. We don't have to get a whole new set of tools for others. Um, the total cost on the bus was $87,881. Plus the only thing that we do additional on the buses up front is the boxes for each one, which would be uh, $2,160. I think I actually put on your uh, paper um, $90,000. It'll be actually $90,041, something like that. Um, for one new international school bus to keep us um, to keep our buses looking good. I can tell you we have a safe fleet. I can tell you that if we, at year 10, if we start spending a lot of money, uh, more money than we're getting back, we will let that bus go. We don't just throw money out there. I'm not going to spend 5000 on a bus that's worth 2500 It's kind of what I'm saying. Um, so we take a hard look at them. Our fleet looks great. The 99 is going away. Our next one in line would be a 2001. Um, so, when you say we, boxes, those are storage storage boxes. storage boxes underneath, and we get those for every bus just because you never know when you're going to take a trip and who's going to need it, and so we we always do boxes where we can. Uh, there will be a camera put on that bus. That's not on this because we already have some cameras that we can uh, that we can put on there. Um, so those are really the only accessories that we that we put on our buses normally. The um, Ellis towing that was in the claims, was that for bus? Uh, most likely. Um, that's you, generally where we use But you don't know which yeah. one or is that the one we're replacing? Uh, no, it was, probably was not. It was probably just, probably had an issue on the okay. route and that's the only way to get it back here. Ellis is the only one we have that can tow it. We can't tow it ourselves. Gotcha. Um, but 99 is, a, is not a normal route bus. It's a spare bus that we use if needed. So it's not a normal. Okay. We, we have we have extra buses. We have about 17 on normal daily schedules, and we have about five 
so yes, 22 total buses. We have five that are spare buses that go through the same procedure. They're monthly inspected. Um, I say monthly, it's once every 20 days, which is four weeks, five days, that's how, that's how they do it. So Aaron has to inspect each bus uh, once a month. So all of those buses are inspected and, and he feels good about putting them on the road. So will this new bus be, wrote, it'll be yes. rotated around. So yes. the 2001 will go one, into the- one of, one of those, or if the ones were for some reason better than the 2002, I gotcha. whichever one, whichever one is the next one that needs to go okay. into the sub lot, I guess you could say, um, spare lot, that's what we'll do. Okay. And this would not be delivered until probably April or May, so it won't go into fleet until next, until next school year. What do you do with the old buses after you get rid of the they graduate from the sub. Well, we used to work hard on going through the whole process of selling uh, through the paper and bidding out, but we found that we were getting as much money to take them to Waddell's and scrap them as we were to go through the whole process. Uh, so the last two we have taken to Waddell's and scrapped, completely scrapped, and received as much or more than we could from just. Uh, we did have a church that purchased one at, at one time. They had someone who could drive, they had their CDL, so they, we sold it for the same price we could have gotten for what else to scrap it. Make a motion to approve. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, our next item is approval of KISTA participation resolution. We have been we have been using KISTA for some time. That's nothing new uh, to any of you. Um, uh, they they do this is with through Ross Sinclair and Associates, but um, they're basically uh, they're looking at this year um, the interest rate is going to be approximately two point seven five percent. So they will finance that bus for us for that amount of time for 10 years um, at that time it will be it will be paid for and then if it's in good shape as I said we will continue uh, to keep that bus especially through year 14 because we know we're going to get some depreciation on that and it's not costing us a lot a lot of money so KISTA is a group that um, several districts in the state use um, we've had no issues with KISTA at all and so I would recommend that we finance this, this bus purchase through KISTA. Make a motion to approve. We have a motion for approval of KISTA participation. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have two seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank you. Our next item is approval of the <coughs> fiscal year 16 KISTA first offer of assistance. This would be pretty familiar to you, I think. We usually get two to three offers per year. This is the first uh, 2016 offer that they've made to us uh, for $20,578. Basically, we have three options uh, that we can uh, take on this. We can uh, uh, plan to go ahead and match the amount uh, immediately and spend it. Uh, we can uh, put it in escrow up to three years, or we can simply reject uh, the offer. Uh, typically, uh, as I can recall, uh, we normally escrow it until we have a, a larger project that we can uh, put together. I will remind you that you are matching these funds, um, but uh, this money uh, we're asking to go ahead and uh, accept it. Uh, my recommendation is we go ahead and accept it uh, and, and plan on matching it, and this will go towards our, our big technology project with the Wi-Fi, uh, and will be the right thing to do, I believe. So, Any questions on that? If not, we ask for a motion. Okay, so we're going to match it and then what, escort? Accept it and match it. Okay. And spend it, it. Yeah. Oh, on, okay. on this current current yeah. project. All right. Yes. So we're going to spend it. <laughs> we always end up spending it, but sometimes we save it for a little while so we That's get a larger a project. Never a problem. <laughs> never a problem. Is there, a, yeah. is there a motion to that effect? So moved. All right. Second. 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 
Is there a second? No second. And then we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, next item is a, uh, approval of the nomination of a KSBA legislative <coughs> contact. I think this speaks for itself. I think you're familiar with it. And basically what we need to do is uh, someone on the board uh, uh, that would be willing to serve uh, as a legislative contact for KSBA. And we would uh, make that selection, let our minutes show that, and then we would send this form in. So what I would do at this point, uh, ask if there's any further discussion, and if not, then ask for a nomination. Uh, for some Nominate Jennifer Shrewsbury. Take a while. Mm -hmm. I'll second. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Are you willing to serve? Yes, <laughs> I, I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, Sense of fear of legislation <laughs> or something. I guess we should make a motion to approve that. Yeah, I think we should. Maybe first we should get a speech. I don't know. Speech prepared. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Shrewsbury. Yes. Yeah. 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 A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Our next item is approval of travel authorizations. Uh, I have two of those, and it would be a pleasure to the board. I ask that you uh, approve both of them at the same time, uh, or, take, or consider them at the same time. The first is a uh, Marstown Middle School chorus trip. Uh, we'll be going uh, one night, uh, overnight, looks like uh, one student uh, to Bowling Green, Kentucky uh, for a chorus program. Uh, everything there is in good order, uh, chaperone-wise. And then uh, on the other is a request from Barstown High School uh, where we will have uh, basically the music department. Uh, we'll be taking approximately 75 students uh, on this trip. Uh, it is what we call a trifecta, um, the out-of-state, the overnight, and also the commercial. <coughs> uh, there, will be, there will be one male, two female, um, uh, chaperones uh, and again that number will be approximately uh, 75 and this is being paid for with friends of music so students are not not paying their own way so any student that's in uh, would like to attend is welcome to attend uh, on the trip so everything I think is in, in, in very good order on that so I ask for your approval on those matters. The only thing I would like to ask is on the trip to Washington if we can have an update before the trip on exactly how many students are going. Okay. Just so we know. Okay. So their, their trip date is April the 10th, so mm -hmm. we, we should be able to get that nailed down. Um, I'd say that they'll have to make plans by the first of the year, so we should be able to get that to you. Okay. Ms. Rogers, make a note of that, and we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Let's be back. School bus or commercial? Charter. 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 Mm -hmm. Commercial. Been checked out? Been checked out, yes, sir. Yeah. I can assure you. And I knew you would ask that question, so it is checked out. Okay. Okay, are there any more questions? Hearing none, uh, let's approve both trips at the same time. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. The motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Our next item is personnel, resignation, and retirement. We have two of those to make you aware of. Audrey Hagen, um, <coughs> food service. We also have a retirement, uh, a medical retirement for Lisa Hamilton, a Barstown primary uh, teacher. That's all I have. Okay. okay. If you're looking on your iPad, you'll see the site-based decision-making council minutes. And um, we're ready to move an executive session and we need a motion to do so. Discuss real property per KRS 61.810-1B. Uh, so moved. Third second. Second. Before we, look, before we go, I'd like to make a announcement it's a major accomplishment by the Barstown football team. The next victory will be the 600th 
win for this school since its existence and I think 267 losses that's about 69 percent um, and there's only 12 other schools in the state that have accomplished something like this I think it needs special recognition in the event when we win the next game bottom line <laughs> just for your all's information it's good to know. thank you good to know. Okay, where were we now? We need a motion for executive session. This may be a motion. We got one. Second. We need, got a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. We will read together here after the executive session. Okay. <laughs>